Oh, oh, oh. 
Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Thank you. 
Well, I have one. Amen. If you have more than one, put it up there. Amen. Even down to the baby, glory to God. Amen. Anything, if you don't understand anything that's, keep, that's keeping you from doing the work of God, you write that chain down. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Place. Uh -huh, uh -huh. 
Oh my God. Out of his familiar area. And every time he tries to step out just a little bit further, that chain that has him confined, that chain that has him restrained, that chain that has him secure will not let him go any further than the chain will allow him to. Understand that chains are meant huh, to keep you in certain boundaries. Chains are meant to keep you in a familiar place. Come on here. Huh? It won't allow you to step out of your comfort zone. Glory to God. And the Lord said on tonight that there are so many people in this place on tonight that are bound with chains. Glory to God. And he is calling us to a different place in him, but because of the chains, he go mind, that I can't do it. Glory to God. Because of the chains of being afraid, of being a failure, that's one of mine too. Glory to God. But because of the chains of guilt, glory to God, he said you will never reach the level that he has called you to. Good God Almighty. Many of us in this room should be just a little bit further than what we are. Oh, <laughs> 
now. Glory to God. You messed up. Nothing happened there. And he tries to place those chains on you and he, on your end, your mind. He tries to get you to agree with him. And once you have agreed with him, ah, you sit down having a conversation with the enemy. Well, maybe I can't do it. There's another chain upon your life. Chains restrict our mobility. It tells you how far you can go.
you cannot conquer it. If you don't speak it, oh my God, I don't want to tell that testimony, oh my God. If you don't want to admit that you're having a change, then you can't confront that thing. That I have spoken on. And in the first one, the Lord had me to release, amen, a chain that had been broken off of my life. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go ahead and tell it. And y'all don't look at me funny because I'm human just like everybody else. Amen. 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 I'm dealing 
what's happening. The spirit of homosexuality is trying to come upon my life. And I don't know how to quite deal with this thing. And it feels like it's getting a little stronger and stronger, God Almighty. And the man of God said, well, we're going to pray right now.
which is the enemy. Tell your neighbor, say, don't fight the symptoms. Find the strong man. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Oh, my God, your life. Oh, Jesus. He comes to bind our heads in chains. Ah, oh, good God. Tell your neighbor one more time to bind the strong man. I'm about to give you scripture. Glory to God. Matthew 16, 21 and 23. I've been up here too long already because I'm already sweating. Is this all right? Yes. Don't lie to me. Amen, and it reads, from that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hand of the elders, chief priests, and the teacher of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Peter took him aside. And began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said. This shall never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the things of God, but the things of men. Amen. In this scripture, Jesus was telling, hallelujah, his disciples what he had to face when he was going to Jerusalem. He was explaining to them that he was going to be killed there. And God Almighty, in that moment, Peter had began to resist the decision that Jesus had made about going to Jerusalem. Jesus didn't rebuke Peter, as you can see, but he rebuked Satan himself. You got to get to the source of the matter. When the enemy has an influence on you, it becomes a symptom in your life. Satan wanted Jesus to focus on Peter because he knew that Jesus loved Peter. He wanted him, Jesus, to get his focus off of what he had to do. So he tried to influence Peter and said, oh, no, Jesus. You can't go there. You know what they've got to do to you. They've got to nail you to the cross. Glory to God. They've got to kill you. But Jesus knew what he had to do. God Almighty. He knew what was already set in place for him. He was born just for that reason. He looked up to his father. He said, Father, prepare me a body. And I will go down and redeem me and back unto you. So say it, get behind me. Because I have a work to do in the earth realm. He rebuked the When 
Jesus died. They put him in the grave. Let me go back to the thing of the crime. Is that all right? Go back. Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. When God placed Adam on the earth, the Bible says that God gave Adam dominion over everything. Yeah. We had authority over everything. The bird, the fish, the snake, or whatever. We had the power. But just because of Eve. What was her name in the... What was it? Okay, I caught him off guard. That's okay. Because of Eve ate the fruit, the authority, and because Adam ate it with her, the authority was snatched from us. <laughs> Hallelujah. But when Jesus came in the scene, did all he had to do, went to Jerusalem, got hung on the cross, glory to God, and then he died. Uh -huh. And that little 
job or position of someone else. When the chains are broken off of your life, let me say this. When the enemy is loose of someone, you can't leave that space empty. <laughs> you have got to fill it up with the power of God. You have got to replace what has
asked my husband, I said, because I asked him a lot of things and I'm getting ready to close. I asked him a lot of things when I'm getting ready to preach. I said, I said, it's strongholds and chains about the same thing. And he gave me what he gave me. But the Lord had told me, he said, he said, if you continue to allow these chains to stay in your life, it can become a stronghold, which means it has become a strong place, a place that has strengthened in your life. And it began to override your spirit man. If you allow these chains to stay on you, it's going to become a stronghold. And you're going to find yourself saying to yourself, I don't know what I can do. Uh, yes. I don't even know what to do now. But because Jesus has come to set you free on tonight, you don't have to be bound with these chains that is upon your life. Glory to God. I told you when you came here, when you got the message to write the chains that are on your life Amen. on a piece of paper. Amen. Come on. And he said, the Lord said, when you write these chains on this paper, begin to believe that when you write it, that it's already loosed.
The Lord said that he has seen your push in the last couple of weeks. He said you have been pushing a little bit further than what you have been doing. Oh my God. And he said just because you have did that, how everything that you have asked for, everything that you have laid on this plate, come God of mind again. Hey! 
Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you right now, God. Yes, we stand together. God, you said we're too touch and agree in your name. You said that you will be there in the midst. Lord, we acknowledge that we have no power within ourselves, God. Lord, to break these chains, but you said that you had all power in your hand. Now, Father, we stand in the name of Jesus and we decree that every chain is broken, every loop, every link is destroyed right 